Hey there, community. I'm Sister Leslie, and thanks for being here. There's always something going on at God's Face, and you're always welcome to connect. Coming up on October 25th, we're hosting a virtual prayer in lieu of all saints and all souls. We'll have a little scripture, some reflection, a ritual, and a little optional sharing. It'll be really nice, so I hope you can come. There's a sign-up form on the Godspace website, and if you sign up, we'll send you the link for the prayer. There are other events and spiritual things there too, so check it out. Now let's get started with our reflection. We'll read the gospel for this Sunday and go from there. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Word of the Lord. This Sunday we get to spend some time with Bartimaeus. You may remember him. I think he's mostly known for his visual impairment and for being healed by Jesus. But as I read this passage again, it makes me think that during his day, he was known for his discipleship. He's not one of the many unnamed people Jesus heals. When he's introduced in the story, we're not only given his name, but we are told who his father is. At the end of the story, after he's healed, it's clear that it's not really the end of the story. He comes with Jesus. Identifying him specifically and mentioning that he continues on with Jesus makes me think that his discipleship story is important. As disciples ourselves, what can we learn from this disciple's encounter with Jesus? What touches me in this story is that question that Jesus poses to Bartimaeus. What do you want me to do for you? With this question, Jesus does not make assumptions about what Bartimaeus wants. In fact, he gives him the autonomy, really the dignity, to name what he wants for himself. That's really important. In ministry and service, how often do I ask people what they want and need, rather than presuming what I think they should want or need? 
making assumptions and dumping things onto people robs them of their dignity. And it's not the model of service that looks like what Jesus did in his ministry. And yet wealthy countries do that to developing countries all the time. And presumably fortunate people do that to so-called less fortunate people too. I think back to all the service trips I've done with college students and I wonder how we were with people. Did we offer what people needed or what we thought they needed? Were we mutual and relational or was our giving just a one-way street? I've wondered more than once if some of the poorly constructed homes in Eastern Kentucky are the result of well-intentioned volunteers who didn't know what we were doing. It's pretty cringy to reflect on that, but it's worth it if it brings a change of heart. I would much rather minister like Jesus did than not. Of course, the other side of the coin is this. How do I answer that question from Jesus? And do I even allow Jesus to ask it of me? Do I presume that God is all-knowing and so I don't need to ask for what I need? I think this question kind of gets to the heart of prayer. And it's kind of familiar because I think I've had this conversation with lots of people, particularly young adults. Why do we need to pray if God already knows what we need? I think there are lots of reasons for why we pray. And a lot of the time, my prayer is not so much needs-based, but simply time spent with God. On the other hand, maybe there is an invitation here to ask God for what I need. The thing is, I'm not always in touch with what I need. I can move through life assuming I'm pretty self-sufficient, but the reality is that I have plenty of needs that I can't meet by myself. Jesus' question helps me to self-reflect. What do I want? And specifically, what do I want from God? It also invites me to turn to God in my vulnerability and need You think that would be easy by now, but I'm here to tell you that it's not. So let's connect with this story a little more deeply. If you were to enter this scene and sit beside Bartimaeus to wait for Jesus, What would be running through your head? What would you hope for as you called Jesus' name? How would you get his attention? As he stopped and called to you, how would you respond? And as you stood before him, looking him full in the face, how would you feel? asks you directly, what do you want me to do for you? How do you respond?
linger in this scene with Jesus. You can say more about what you need and why you need it. You can talk with him about anything else on your mind, in your heart. Or you can simply be with him in silence. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to connect with God's space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky as well. As you enter this week, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you. And may we all take good care of each other. Peace.